we call spiritual practice. Spiritual practice is all the effort to be, go back to our true nature, our own abode. And that is the, the, the words of the song, Mon Cholo Nija Niketane, uh, go back to our own abode. Actually, we sing many times uh, its English translation on some of our Sunday services. Uh, oh my mind, let us go back to our own abode. Shantanu, ita ramra ekta English version gan kori. Ota apni jadi sparen tulle neven. Oh my mind, let us go back to our own abode. Hmm. So, not like I sang, it should no, be no. like you sang. <laughs> no, no. You. So, let us uh, uh, listen to uh, rendering of this great song. Shangshar Shangshar Obi Deshe Bideshe Ni ke to ni, 
तुपथे मनो करो आरो हन प्रेमे रो आलो जाली चलो नुखन शुद्ध पथे मनो करो आरो हन प्रेमे रो आलो जाली चलो गेते संबल राखो पुन्न धन गुपने उती जतो ने सुत्त पथे मनो करो आरो हन प्रेमे रो आलो जाली चलो संबल रखो पुन्न धन गोपने अति जतने लोभ मोहवादी पथे दर्शुग राखुरे प्रोहरी परमोजातुने राखुरे प्रोहरी शमोदामो दुई जाने मोनो चालो ने जो निकेतने मोनो चालो ने जो साधु संग नामे आंथुधाम श्रांत हे तथा करीबे विश्राम साधु संग नामे आंथुधाम शांत होले तथाए कुरीबे विश्राम पथो भ्रांत होले शुद्धाई बे पात शिपंतु निबाशिगाने पथो भ्रांत होले शुद्धाई बे शेपंतु निबाशिगाने जो दी देखो पथे भाईर आकार जो दी देखो पथे भाईर आकार राजार प्रबोल प्रताप शिपथ राजार प्रबोल प्रताप शामुनो डरे जार शासने शिपथ राजार प्रबोल प्रताप शामुनो जाद शाशोने मोनो चालो ने जो निकेतोने शंकर विदेशे विदेशीर बेशे भ्रमो कैनो आकारोने मोनो च 
वांग में मन से प्रतिष्ठिता मनो में वाचि प्रतिष्ठित आविरावीर्म ईधी वेद से मणी स्थ श्रुत मे मा प्रहासी अनेनाधीत नाहूरात्र संदधा ऋत वदिष्या सत्यम वदिष्या तन्मावत तद्वक्तावत अवत मवतु वक्तावतु वक्ता ओ शांति 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 मे माय स्पीच बी फर्मली एस्टैब्लिश्ड इन माय माइंड मे दी माइंड टू बी फर्मली एस्टैब्लिश्ड इन माय स्पीच मे देयर बी परफेक्ट करेस्पॉन्डेंस बिटवीन माय थॉट्स वर्ड्स एंड एक्शंस O self-effulgent Lord, be revealed in my consciousness. May the truths of the scriptures come to me. May not what I learn from them ever forsake me. Let me live my life day and night according to their teachings. I shall speak what is appropriate I shall speak the truth may that protect me may that protect the teacher om peace 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 let us feel our true inner most unchanging being in our heart as 
a steadily burning flame. Let us concentrate on it as our true self. As I concentrate on it, I see this light in the heart is becoming bigger and bigger, brighter and brighter. I see my whole body is filled with this light. I see all the bones, the muscles, blood vessels, various organs, skin, all made of this one light. Like in a wax statue, Every part is wax. So I see I am light. Immensely bright. And yet soothing. And I also see the whole universe is also filled with the same light. All distinctions of I and mine, time and space are dissolved in this luminous ocean of pure existence. All desires have vanished. All fear has vanished. In this absolute oneness, I am bliss. I am love. I am peace. Om. Peace. Peace. Peace.
So dear friends, let us begin today's uh, discussion on this very special book, a very special biography of Sri Ramakrishna with our usual opening chant. तव कथा तप्त जीवन कविभिड़ित कलम श्रवण मंगल श्रीमदात भुवि गृणंते भूरिदाजना इन अवर प्रीवियस क्लास वी अगेन ट्राई टू रिकैपिटुलेट Uh, the special nature of this biography of Sri Ramakrishna that Swami Sardananda, the author, uh, who is a direct disciple of Sri Ramakrishna and who, having practiced the spiritual disciplines and imbibed that uh, ultimate wisdom because of which all knots of ignorance are cut asunder and a person is illumined. That Swami Sardananda is writing this biography which is uh, giving us a picture of Sri Ramakrishna, not only of his uh, actions and external facts, but the internal workings and he makes very significant remark which we tried to uh, ponder on in our last class that uh, the human being is having this both things mind and body so the actions of body alone cannot describe uh, a human being's life uh, it is uh, important, therefore, to look at the intention, the, ma the mental attitude with which those actions have been performed. Uh, it is, and we also saw that this is specially important for human beings, uh, a biography of a dog or a cat, you know, these, uh, uh, their life is of the instinctive level and therefore it is mostly connected with body but for human beings the mind is very important that is also a, the a, one of the derivations of the word the sanskrit word for a human being and uh, that it is manushya where man is prominent you know that it is the mind uh, is very prominent and we see it that a person uh, in spite of all external physical things available may not be happy or satisfied in fact is not unless the mind also is happy and the aspirations of mind they vary from person to person depending on a different scale of evolution uh, which can be called psychological or spiritual evolution. Darwin's uh, theory of evolution speaks uh, only about the physical level of evolution. He calls it also like that evolution of species. Mm. But when it comes to human being as uh, uh, one of the later evolutionist Julian Huxley he writes 
that when it comes to mind the evolution is now no more happening on the physical level but it is taking uh, the turn towards the mental and spiritual evolution it is the spiritual evolution determines the desires that a person has and therefore the life becomes different although the physical uh, everybody would be say uh, eating same kind of food available everybody may be dwelling in the similar kind of housing uh, yet you will see the choices vary uh, the same apparently same person uh, will have many different temperamental choices and that determines therefore the actual life of a person and thus the life of a person depends on not just physical actions but the intentions and the various emotional states which prompted those actions and it becomes tremendously much more important when the life of an incarnation of god is being described friends why because as we saw last in our last class that there is no other desire except uh, to bring this illumination to others therefore they their life is very difficult for the ordinary person to understand like an ordinary person has a desire and co- correspondingly the action takes place uh, there is in uh, an incarnation of god there is no unfulfillment at all there is no desire everything is perfectly available in fact the person is full of bliss irrespective of the external situations and therefore uh, to see why what prompted that person to act so it becomes far more important therefore to see Uh, the mental attitude with which those actions have been performed and uh, we see that different things uh, once you know uh, two people were traveling in a train uh, those days there were no rules no smoking or whatever it is so uh, this person uh, was sitting across another man and he asked this person that well you seem to be having smoking do you have a match box and this man replied no but i have a lighter do you want he said no uh, it is why uh, lighter would serve the same purpose no no i wanted the match stick uh only as a toothpick uh, <laughs> lighter won't work for that it is the, the purpose is not to light a fire there but as using it as a toothpick so uh, there the matchstick will work but lighter will not work so look at you know the different intentions why this person is asking for a match box not for lighting anything but clearing the teeth of some residual food particles so even in such simple things you can see that there is a difference of intention behind the actions so this chapter that we are studying right now uh, it is the second chapter of this particular volume uh, which is centered on the teachership of shri ramakrishna a uh, guru bhav a uh, teachership shri ram krishna in the role of a teacher uh, as we saw that the title that the author has given to this whole book is uh, 
श्री राम कृष्ण लीला प्रसंग और एज इट इज ट्रांसलेटेड इन इंग्लिश श्री राम कृष्ण एंड हिज डिवाइन प्ले प्ले इन द्ले यू हैव एन एस्यूम्ड आइडेंटिटी ऑन द स्टेज यू टेक अप एन आइडेंटिटी विच इज नॉट रियली यू बट देन यू एक्ट अकॉर्डिंग टू द स्क्रिप्ट देर इट इज सो एन इनकारनेशन is uh, has assumed the role of a human being mm, it is uh, so uh, acts like a human being but is beyond uh, the ordinary human beings acts exactly like a human being but the awareness is different mm, it is uh, like shankaracharya says uh, gives this example that suppose uh, a man is acting on the stage uh, in the role of a beautiful girl now uh, has put all the attire and everything like a girl has all uh, the makeup at uh, everybody is looking uh, at uh, this person as a girl and many actually Uh, seeing the beauty of this girl are so charmed uh, and in mind thinking maybe i can marry her uh, yeah it is she looks so beautiful uh, but the actor can that actor have actually a desire to get a, a husband uh, well, because he actually he is a man you know ah actually he is a man so therefore uh, it is uh, those days the discussion on homosexuality and all wasn't there you know so it is uh, so he will not feel that kind of uh, pulse so similarly here is in the role of a man Shri Ram Krishna is God in the role, in the appearance of a man. So that is why the actions are almost impossible to explain. Nothing of that divinity has been compromised. As I tell that very funny but very highly illustrative incident that happened. uh when we had chapel there that a little 7 8 year old girl and uh, she asked me the question and uh, pointing at the picture of shri ram krishna that uh, is he a god or is he a man and then i asked her the counter question showing all those were all wooden chairs then so uh, it is i asked that is it wood or is it chair so it is wood in the form of chair that girl very smart uh, she immediately uh, understood both it is god as well as man means god assuming the shape of man uh, like the wood assuming the shape of a chair now in assuming the shape of the chair nothing of the wood is being sacrificed Uh, it will still burn as wood uh, all the properties of wood are kept intact and yet it serves the function of a chair so in exactly the same way here is the human appearance and so the purpose of this appearance is to bring the same wisdom to us that yes seeing that uh, you see uh, one will see like this durwa sitting here she will see yes i too am god i am not just this little human being i am actually god nothing of my divinity has been compromised i have been stupidly thinking that i am a human being this ignorance has to be dispelled that is the the whole idea in bringing this uh, 
God in a human form. That it is okay, look at me. Here is a human form. And incarnation of God says, look at me. Am I not human being like you? Oh yes. And look at my interior awareness. What is my awareness? I am divine. I am God. Each of us then will see, Durva will say then, Oh yes, I too am what you will say. I am God. Huh? What all of you will say, isn't it? Huh? Naomi, what will you say? I am huh? God, exactly. Say loudly, you know, I am God. Uh, affirm it loudly. I am God in the human form. And that's it, you know. It is exactly that being the purpose. The actions also are like that. And so, there are, when we read in the uh, life of Sri Ramakrishna, that he is having so many different visions uh, and so many different moods and every now and then he is going into a state of trance called Samadhi. So this chapter is titled uh, about mm, the translator has not translated these words into English because there are no exact parallels. So he has kept them just like Bhava, Samadhi and Darshan uh, as it was in the original. Uh, Bhava uh, means one comes in a particular mood uh, because of that a, a, a divine connection. We get into different moods too, you know, we are all some very moody people. Uh, hey, why are you not doing it today? Punita, uh, do that. She, uh, Swami ji, ah, today my mood is off. I am not going to do it. Do you have sometimes your mood off? All the time. All the time. Oh, oh. <laughs> no, no, not today. Today you don't seem to be in a mood off state. Uh, it is. Uh, but, okay, okay. Uh, so we... Oh, okay. <laughs> so it is. Uh, we go into different moods, different states, uh, depending on the circumstances. Same with Sri Ramakrishna, but those moods are not available to us. Uh, like getting upset is a mood that is available to most of us. In fact, we exhibit it now and then that I am upset uh, or I am so elated uh, what happened my candidate won the election or I hit a lottery and then you your mood just goes high you feel uh, you are in the uh, on the ninth cloud so it is uh, that is how our moods are but which Sri Ramakrishna the mood is uh, not in that sense, but this bhava means he is connected with a particular type of divine manifestation. And so he is experiencing that. And through that he is showing that this is a way to realize God. This is one of the ways by which you can also get connected to God. These things will come as we discuss, but to tell us that how uh, the physical tra transformations and psychological transformations happen uh, within a human being. Uh, the body and mind, they are so closely connected that we see the certain emotions, uh, every emotion in fact, bring out a corresponding change in physical appearance. And certain common emotions we do experience, 
that uh, uh, suppose uh, uh, somebody ha- is feeling sad because maybe some very near and dear person has said final goodbye and now uh, what do you think that person's physical appearance will be uh, will that person be so happy wow very nice ha ha ha, ha. no uh, you will see a different kind of mood on the face of that person uh, it is uh, immediately people will see that the person is feeling sad it is because the face is like that it is uh, uh, similarly with other things also uh, if uh, you feel angry and uh, there is a particular expression of it on the face that you see that the person is angry uh, you may see the fist clench mm, the, the teeth uh, uh, kind of uh, you know being grinding on each other mm. so it is you see that the person is angry it is so these are the common emotions but with the emotions of connection with the ultimate divine principle a uh, similar changes uh, in appearance in behavior uh, they take place so behavior is external uh, the mood or the particular attitude is internal so in sri ramakrishna you see it to such an extent that they b- body just uh, acts according to the internal emotion with such intensity because there is a perfect correspondence between the physical and the mental we don't have that kind of perfect correspondence uh, it is therefore many thing we understand mentally but our body we say therefore the flesh is weak and uh, we do not uh, uh, find it easy to put that into our day to day practice that hindrance was not there with sri ramakrishna there was uh, the uh, hardware capabilities were perfectly matched by uh, the interior the, the software functions and so and this they will be exactly reflected there uh, there are sometimes mismatch that we see that it is oh this is uh, you could have done it had you had an hdmi port on your this you don't have it so that capability is not uh, exhibited uh, because of the lack of certain hardware so it is uh, this is not with sri ramakrishna Uh, the body and the mind every single thing gets expressed in the body and with certain moods you see what was not available at that body gets that body gets augmented by adding that part immediately uh, like okay suppose uh, i have to put uh, something uh, on my computer to a tv Mm, they use that cable called hdmi cable and uh, there has to be a cable there has to be a port for it if it is not there it cannot be done but which sri ramakrishna uh, well that port becomes available although it is not seen now but if it is necessary uh, as it were it will come quickly that he, that has been amazingly seen uh, with like it these examples will be given here and uh, later on swami sardananda says that if we look at this or uh, the all the rules of physiognomy and physiology anatomy that those all rules will have to be changed uh, if one observes the life of sri ramakrishna that uh, let us read this part <coughs> like ordinary emotions the spiritual moods that arise from one pointed intense love of god cause extraordinary physical changes 
For example, when uh, an exuberant divine love is manifest, aspirants feel less attracted to sense objects. They eat and sleep less. They develop a taste for particular foods and lose interest in others. So this is what is seen happening that uh, people change their lifestyle, not deliberately, but because of certain connections, the new uh, connectivity with God is developed. So automatically certain changes come in behavior. They have not been told by anybody to change their uh, lifestyle, but it happens as an automatic result of these mental uh, changes. So, <clears throat> Sri Ramakrishna therefore said, I could not then bear the presence of worldly people and the company of relatives would make me feel suffocated as if my life force were uh, leaving me, leaving my body. He further said, in those who sincerely call on God, uh, Mahamaya, uh, no, sorry, it says uh, Mahavayu, the life force of their bodies rushes rapidly to the head. Now, whatever it may mean, it is very difficult to understand uh, the meaning of this and uh, right now I am not going to make an attempt uh, to describe the meaning of this. But uh, it is uh, what the first statement that he made, that it is uh, his own experience that uh, normally uh, when a person meets the close relatives, oh, uh, I am seeing my daughter or my son, uh, then uh, immediately the, the uh, face of that person becomes uh, flushed with joy. It is uh, the expectations and then, uh, so what will we do? What shall I feed my dear daughter? And all those ideas, uh, they just come up that uh, it is, uh, uh, but now when you see that they are the bondages, uh, when it is seen that these are the things, these are the relations which are tying me down uh, to this body. Mm, it is because they are connections with body and if I am linking myself to that, then, uh, well, that... Uh, my awareness is limited to that, just I am this body. So, for Sri Ramakrishna, he would see them as very dangerous things. Mm, it is as he describes, uh, I could not then bear the presence of worldly people and the company of relatives would make me feel suffocated. And this actually happens. Uh, when you are looking to get liberated, uh, all this company becomes, in other conditions, this company is very welcome, very nice, very happy. Uh, but when you want uh, to uh, invoke the spirit of liberation, uh, the spirit of your spiritual identity, then the physical identity is a hindrance in that. And whatever uh, that uh, makes this physical identity more prominent, you want to run away from those things. As it is like a poison, you know. It is uh, uh, a person starts running away from that. Uh, Sri Ramakrishna had sometimes therefore described uh, that these... Uh, uh, close relatives, they looked as if they are the deep wells and uh, I used to be scared that I will forget, I will fall in them and drown in them. So this is how the, the 
particular visions and moods they will change the actions and we see it therefore uh, ordinarily a person uh, suppose uh, subhashish somebody comes to you uh, subhashish uh, i am going to give you 1 million dollars uh, you will feel happy uh, although you otherwise may not have time uh, well this person is actually going to give me uh, 1 million dollars not those those uh, those scammy emails but it is see that this person is uh, giving me 1 million dollars uh, how nice it will be uh, you will immediately make time for him come on uh, let us sit uh, you will treat him give him uh, uh, your best treats and so forth uh, which sri ramakrishna the the effect was exactly opposite that uh, that businessman came to give him money uh, those days 10000 rupees which will now translate into something like a uh, uh, million dollars or something like that um, it is he came to give being very uh, positively impacted by the pure devotional life of sri ramakrishna and his renunciation so he came to give and sri ramakrishna refused to entertain him when the uh, owner of the temple uh, mathur babu this man is uh, just an ordinary uh, priest there getting a uh, salary it was given this his salary was something like 8 uh, rupees ah huh? ah 7 rupees something that kind of a, a um, petty ser- servant status that he had uh, just a worshipper and this owner of the temple is coming to give him money and then just in case uh, he, things he dies who is going to take care of sri ramakrishna with that thought he wanted to write some property in the name of sri ramakrishna and what was sri ramakrishna's response he took a kind of stick to go and beat him get out uh, you rascal you want to um, make me tied to this world get out now see Uh, the owner of that estate uh, his master in a way uh, he is saying that so a completely opposite response it is uh, we may understand these things but when it comes actually to us since our spiritual level is not there uh, we think hmm okay uh, right now i need uh, some money i can use some money now so let me take it now uh, after all my spiritual identity is there uh, it is eternal i am divine it is not going to go away uh, so first let me take the money then uh, from tomorrow onwards maybe i will be uh, looking for my spiritual identity Uh, let me today have my uh, physical identity take money and then uh, isn't it tommy uh, that okay it it is a temptation that comes okay today uh, let it be like that from tomorrow i may do something different uh, it is but with sri ramakrishna this attitude being there this feel this awareness being there the action was in this manner quite opposite <coughs> we have already oh i did not announce the page number uh, it is page number 422 in this book we have already briefly described kundalini any mental modifications or moods that have arisen and are emerging in an individual in this life and in past lives remain in a subtle form 
and manifest in a great vigorous a uh, motivating power that is called kundalini according to patanjali and other sages the yogi say that in bound souls it remains almost completely dormant or unmanifest even when the kundalini is dormant memory imagination and other thoughts arise in a person's mind if it somehow becomes awakened it can move a spiritual aspirant to attain self knowledge or god realization this uh, uh, a very beautiful idea kundalini uh, means it is uh, a coiled potential energy it is which can become kinetic uh, it is like in the old clocks and uh, there used to be a spring you know and you wind the spring uh, so uh, it will get uh, you could see it is getting in the shape of a, a tightly wound coil uh, then uh, for whatever time it is planned uh, one week or so we have some clocks like that here too that you wind and then it continues uh, for that time gradually unwinding the energy now with us what happens it is a very intricate science friends uh, a great idea in actually uh, our perceptions and our actions whatever is happening uh, input as well as output all this is getting micro processed and stored mm. even if this body goes away that storage does not go mm. only the body changes but all that you have done everything is stored just like you know uh, these examples come handy these days that uh, uh you change your smartphone and uh, do you use smartphone tommy ha uh, see so what happens uh, if when it gets old uh, now the battery charging takes long you know very frequently you have to keep on charging it uh, it is uh, also not getting any new updates because uh, the hardware has become now too old uh so you think of getting a new one uh but you do not want to lose all your contacts all the nice pictures that you have taken on it every information that you have uh, you transfer it into new machine now similarly when this body falls off uh, nothing actually goes every single thing Uh, every single action that we have performed uh, it is stored even every mental action that we have done gets stored uh, suppose you have thought some good thoughts about somebody you may not even remember but then that gets micro processed and remains if if you had uh, thought something bad about anybody that also gets micro processed and remains with you you might not have done any action uh, to you know express it but still it remains with you uh, it gets everything friends it gets stored and then that store house becomes your uh, motivation that is why every person has different motivation and uh, some have right from the childhood uh, the uh, desire to be musician some do not have at all any inclination uh, to listen to music or uh, hey that is not my field they say it is no uh, they, they they don't like music it is and most people actually and uh, fall in that category most human beings they like music with other things for about 5 10 minutes 
it is more than that <laughs> most of them cannot bear it <laughs> it is so you see that uh, it is uh, the uh, our motivations become different according to our this uh, storehouse of experience that is called kundalini it is all everything is stored that is why some uh, have spiritual inclination a uh, very few rarely people have spiritual inclination and uh, that is why in such places you will get only a few people and uh, not a big crowd it is uh, because that inclination doesn't come unless a stage of spiritual evolution happens it is uh, in bhagavad gita it is very beautifully expressed that manushyanam sahasreshu kashchid yatati siddhaye yatatam api siddhanam kashchid mam vetti tatvatah among thousands uh, there is maybe a one rare person who is striving uh, to uh, realize this highest truth and amongst um, all those are who are striving maybe rarely somebody kashchid mam vetti tatvatah uh, rarely somebody attains to this success of it so it is uh, every thing you see the tendencies differ it is uh, you can see to know two people therefore have uh, tendencies which are exactly alike uh very different uh, just as you won't find two uh, people with exactly s- same faces uh, maybe they are like twins they may but otherwise uh, you have the distinction in faces more distinction is there in the mental attitudes and aptitudes of a person Uh, far more than the physical appearance i was telling about twins twins may have the physical exact similarity and uh, maybe even mother finds it difficult to identify which is which but uh, their tendencies could be poles apart uh, it is <laughs> therefore you see that all this motivational power is in every person that mm, directs mm, the the life now this motivational power uh, normally is uh, just directed as uh, the common these things are common uh, people as they perceive things but uh, when uh, the new awareness sets in that changes the course now uh, that motivates this internal power in fact uh, it is uh, the graded course of kundalini has been described in the books on uh, this uh, yoga this science that how uh, from the lowest which is uh, corresponding to uh, our this uh, anus the organ of excretion uh, where a person is terribly uh, lethargic inertiatic and does not do anything uh, no intention at all there is uh, uh, just being that's all there is no manifestation of life there there is life but no manifestation of it like you see rocks uh, and such things you don't see them you know they are just there uh, it is that and like uh, one thing my mother used to sometimes tell hey uh, i had kept this pot here uh, where did you take it um, mom i don't see the pot doesn't have legs it doesn't go on its own anywhere so somebody must have kept it from here to there somewhere so uh, these things therefore we call them inert lifeless uh, they do not show any sign of life they just are 
then some yeah, activity comes in the activity of procreation uh, eating this means to expand the existence uh, so uh, that is shown at the level of our organ of procreation uh, the sex organ uh, then uh, up to this there is uh, nothing like human being uh, these are common things for all humans as well as animals then there is a special thing occurs that well i want to explore more avenues of happiness more avenues of knowledge i want to understand how these things function and use them for me for my uh, convenience so human beings develop what is called science and technology you see how greatly the life is changed that is where you see a big difference between the animals and human beings cockroaches they say precede human race by uh, many many uh, hundreds of thousands of years or millions of years uh, but yet they live in the same way the cockroaches they have not changed their lifestyle with human beings imagine uh, ima just imagine a person uh, living say just 200 years ago and now suddenly is dropped in manhattan uh, that person will be totally confused will now what is this so much change has taken place uh, that person will not be able to say see how am i to survive uh, where do i get to get my food uh, well you go to this shop buy buy, buy what to buy uh, it is completely changed you cannot imagine you know you can uh, see how quick the this things change everything human mind has made through this science and technology uh, that evolution of uh, this uh, human knowledge of that level that is then when the kundalini has risen to the navel mm. it is there is still no inkling of spirituality mm it is all the material life still in a way just animal life but uh, with uh, a lot of science and art and everything developed you see uh, it is uh, not done by animals uh, you don't see that an uh, uh, animal is uh, doing some surrealistic painting Uh, no not possible you can't think of an animal doing it you see it is uh, an uh, it is a nightingale sings but the nightingale does not compose any music to enhance the level of voice and get uh, like our shantanu his wife they do develop new ragas new melodical patterns and so forth uh, that is not given to animals this is just human thing human growth for more and more enjoyment more and more desires come up and what makes this spiritual evolution possible then from here one starts feeling empty and getting more and more caught in contradictions and uh, then Uh, one thinks charlie thinks oh i went to get more pleasure but with more pleasure i got more pain also in fact uh, the one uh, that as swami vivekananda puts it in a very succinct way uh, our pleasures increase in arithmetic proportion with that our pains increase in geometric proportions it is and then you see what is what are these pleasures no i want to go beyond that who am i what is the nature of this world 
దాట్ లెవెల్ ఆఫ్ కుండలిని ఈజ్ డిస్క్రైబ్ వెన్ ది కుండలిని రైజెస్ టు కరస్పాండింగ్ టు హార్ట్ డోంట్ థింక్ దట్ దే ఆర్ యాక్చువల్లీ ది ప్లేసెస్ దే ఆర్ జస్ట్ Uh, physical descriptions of psychological phenomena so it is uh, yeah like you draw the the music scales and all that uh, that doesn't if you put your ear to it you can't hear any music in it it is just describing the notes so it is uh, in that sense these descriptions are that now you your idea is not to get any enjoyment from things you see that it doesn't have any uh, it is uh, nothing brings you joy except the knowledge of this self so uh, long and short of this journey then is that man becomes uh, convinced that i want to know who am i and then that becomes a launching pad for further Uh, unfoldment of this power of kundalini uh, you realize it to you can actually now get a sense a conviction that yes uh, there is that i have kind of located it uh, so you see it at the level of your throat uh, then you almost now are there uh, like you uh find out yes vedanta society is on angel street like this i have uh, seen a uh, uh, and you feel that okay now i am almost there and then you see the building hey but you are still not in the building and that is where the kundalini is set to rise between the eyebrows and the description stops there you cannot describe any more so this is how you say that uh, the at various levels therefore the mind works differently the goals are different uh, and thus the life and the perceptions experiences all become different this is given to to make us aware of the various ideas uh, uh about the experiences uh, that shri ramakrishna has his life uh, his experiences uh, his visions and his uh, k- 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 getting into the uh, total communion with god samadhi so we shall discontinue this discussion i mean uh, hold it on till next tuesday uh, any questions do you have about this Okay yes Charlie Yeah but uh, in the mind therefore uh, you think that as well that uh, that I should not say that uh, it is uh, it why do you you think that it is critical because it is not right isn't it and therefore you don't give it a vent right so that together is a thought that it is uh, uh, i am getting this thought but it is not right and so together now you are honest to that uh, coupled thought that i am getting this but i am also getting this that it is not good it is not right to do it so yeah any other yes yes read there is a web question yeah. so it was mentioned that kundalini is the storehouse of experiences how does kundalini relate to samskaras do samskaras reside in kundalini we had heard that samskaras is stored in mind stuff the subtle body very correct Uh, that it is the sanskaras that is sanskaras are the impressions or micro processed actions physical and mental that is what makes sanskara sanskara is a very beautiful word uh, which uh, is sanskara is like a seed which has the potential to become a tree 
in fact it is uh, kind of uh, vibrating how can i become a tree there is a propensity to become a tree there is the seed and wants to grow so uh, every sanskara is like that and and how do you get it uh, like a person uh, who plays tabla now is not playing tabla there is no really occasion to play tabla but you will see the fingers of that person moving like this uh, now what is it it is sanskara that the action that is being done uh, is there uh, and then with that uh, the impressions that uh, get sprouted into the corresponding actions so this is how sanskara is now these all these sanskaras are stored in what is called mind stuff very correct that person's observation is correct sanskrit word is chitta now this chitta uh, it is uh, they when it comes to you know that all these impressions when you think of it as the power in which they would be uh, developing that very storehouse of sanskaras gets the name kundalini uh, it is kundalini and storehouse of impressions are from that point of view identical the word kundalini is used to describe a process of unfoldment that is the only difference it is uh, when it like you have a, a store house of money uh, just to give you an analogy uh, that suppose you have a, a big uh, that vault filled with uh, all the currency notes and gold and all that uh, now that is money and in the bank there is the money the difference is there that the bank in that there the transactions are happening uh, the, that money is going to bank wants it to be lent out so that it can make some profit on it so kundalini is a description just a very loose analogy not uh, uh, you know to take it too literally that it is like a bank uh, that is now these uh, stored sanskaras it is not just a vault but it is now ready uh, to express its potential that is when uh, the name kundalini becomes uh, more significant and that is why the yogis in that context use the word kundalini very good question uh yes why luko well the the karma is not really in that sense burnt it is a, a funny word uh, it is uh, your karma as that word sanskara same is like your karma and uh, whatever actions you have done when uh, those actions are ready to deliver the fruit then it gets the name karma that oh why this is happening well my karma uh, the other day our punita was using that expression that why the swami well that is my karma <laughs> means uh, something that i might have done earlier now that is bearing the result so you call it karma now the spiritual awareness is uh, now progressing in a way and that karma is being now used it is burning is a way to describe it you can use that word if the awareness is right like you use the say fuel uh, and make fire out of it the fuel is getting burned another way to say it that the fuel is getting used so kundalini is not just the, the in a way the burning of karma but making the 
proper use of these stored karmas uh, to raise your level of awareness. Uh, that is a slight difference in that. So, let us uh, conclude with the closing prayers. As you know, uh, Swami Chetanananda, the author of this book, uh, I mean the translator, he will be giving a spiritual retreat on 13th of October. He will be here on 13th and 14th of October. So on 13th he will be giving a spiritual retreat. You can read the description there. Uh, it is a day-long retreat and one has to register for it. Uh, you can register at least, you know, you can register there in the uh, office or on uh, web also. So, it is, you can join that retreat with that registration. If you register, there is a limit, I think, uh, when you get, can get some concessional rate. It is $30 is the fee uh, for the retreat, but if you register, uh, before some, what is the date? October 3rd, I think, yeah. October 3rd, then you get a, a, a discount of a solid $10, you know. So you can register then for $20. Am I doing marketing well? Okay. <laughs> okay. So let us uh, conclude uh, with the closing prayers. May the Divine, who is Father in Heaven of the Christians, Holy One of the Jewish faith, Allah of the Muslims, Buddha of the Buddhists, Dao of the Daoists, Great Spirit of the Native Americans, Ahur Mazda of the Zoroastrians, and Brahman of the Hindus, lead us from the unreal to the real, from darkness to light, from death to immortality. May the all-loving being manifest himself unto us and grant us abiding understanding and all-consuming divine love. Peace, peace, peace be unto all.